four, and then one under, two, three. Over and under and up through the circle. Okay. We'll do that all the way around. Skip four, weave three. Skip four, weave three. Over and under. And you can make room if it looks like it's getting a little bunched together. And also, what you want to remember is as you're weaving this through, you want to pull, bring the leaf down in this direction. You don't want the leaf to drift out here like that because then it's, it's very hard to complete and it's not correct. You want to bring it sort of down towards the base. But we're skipping four, one, two, three, four, under. And then we're going over and under three. Now when you get to the tight spots, like where I'm at right now is kind of like the tight spot. You don't want to weave the thick end of the leaf in. For instance, this is the very thick end right about here. You don't want to try to push this through here it'll, or it'll break the stem. The object of this game is actually not to break the stem as much as possible. If you break one, you could always tape it and fix it, but you want to avoid breaking these stems. So what you do is you take this thin end of the leaf, you do the same routine with it. It bends better. Skip the four, one, two, three, four, and then over and under three. And once you get it through, then you could pull it all the way. Here too is the very last one. You've got to be careful not to break the, the stem. You take the skinny end of the leaf, skip four, one, two, three, four, and go over and under three of them for this particular basket. There's a lot of baskets you can make. Different styles require different combinations. But then you turn it over once it's all through, and you pull them. The next step is basically tightening them and making sure they're all lined up correctly. Sometimes you have to adjust the leaf. The leaf is very much like a ribbon. If you've ever pulled a ribbon through a tight area, you'll notice it'll try to bend and twist the wrong way. So adjusting the leaf, you're just helping it to be in the right direction. So you just tighten it up a little. Some of this you could do blindfolded after a while, but some of it you really need to see what you're doing. Like right now, I need to have my eyes and see that I'm pulling it all and making it correct, each one equal. Okay, and then we're basically done with that step. And once you have this step done, you want to bring all of these together like this. Just like that. Yeah, and then you turn it over. And sort of like an onion, you hold it upside down. You take one out, and you want to count how many are here just to make sure. So you, you don't count this one, you leave this one for last and you go in front of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sixteen. So half of sixteen is eight. So in front of number sixteen you count eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You pull the eighth one out just a little bit and you put sixteen through eight and you anchor it. Now the anchor is temporary, that's just to hold the leaf so it doesn't jump out of place. And then from there you pull the number seven leaf. This is number eight. You go to number seven and you pull it out a little bit. And you go underneath 16 with number 15. And you do the same thing, except you don't need to anchor it anymore. The first anchor holds it for the rest. Then you go to number 14 and you do the same again. You have to pull the leaf out a little bit. Otherwise it'll bunch down and it'll be hard to see where you're at and complete it. So. Just make sure you pull the leaf out just a little bit. It's the same routine for the hat, and we'll show you that a little bit later in the program. Making the hat. But this is the basket. And here you can't skip any. You gotta make sure that you are taking the one directly behind the one on each end. That means the one behind this one and the one behind this one. If you don't use your eyes here, you could skip one. And then when you go to tighten it, you'll notice that something's wrong and you'll have to undo it and do it again. So be careful not to skip any here. Just uh, take the one behind the one out and you can see which one is next. You just use your eye and now the anchored one can come out of that anchored spot. That did its job. And if you did this correctly and you have an even number, when you pull on both ends 
you'll notice it'll pull equally. Okay, and you keep pulling it. Now there's a point that you're going to have to stop and adjust the leaf because right now the leaf is starting to bunch up like this right here. Yeah, so you want to adjust it a little bit. And I'm going to turn it over in just a second here so that I could adjust the inside of the leaf. This is the part they don't show you in the book. I'll turn it over. And if you notice, these leaves are kind of cupped, sort of like a cup. You want to reverse that by lifting it with your finger. I call this adjusting the leaf. Let's see if we can get that. You adjust the leaf by using your index finger and just lifting up so that yeah, so that instead of having a a cupped kind of thing, you have it sort of instead of incaved, you have it concaved. By making this adjustment, it allows you to tighten it further. Ready. All right, so we adjusted the leaf on the inside. This adjustment is very important. They don't show you this in any of the books that show you about palm weaving. But here today, you're going to see it. So I made the adjustment. Now we're going to turn it over, and we're going to tighten it little by little. There's no need to rush here. Um, you might have to adjust the leaf three and four times, however many times it takes until it's done. Some leaf cooperates better than other leaf, you'll notice. Um, and you tighten it up, stop again, turn it over. It looks okay, but you could still use a little adjusting here. Just lift them up a little bit. It almost looks like a turbine jet engine. Then you turn it over again. The more you adjust it, the tighter you could make it, and the prettier it looks. The more perfect it looks, actually. If you don't adjust it, all the tightening in the world will not help it to, to look good. You have to really adjust it to make it right. And then we turn it over once again and see if it needs any help. See right here, for instance, it's starting to cup. You want it to reverse that. Instead of in cave, you want it concave. And you just do that to all of them as best you can. Some of them you might not have to. But you make that adjustment very important. If you leave out the adjustment, you're leaving out a step. It's very important. Up there. Okay, then we go back to tightening again, and we're almost done with the tightening. Uh, there we go. Now, in the direction the leaf points, in this case it's pointing in a clockwise direction, you want to weave it over and under to fill in that space right here. So let's do that now. But as you're doing that, you want to be careful you don't break the leaf. So you have to help the leaf. by using your other fingers to kind of guide it. Yeah. And you keep doing that. And all the way around. I'm kind of breaking off the tips because it helps you to thread it in better. Let's see that in slow motion. You could use a scissor or a knife to cut the tips. You don't have to do it like that. And keep going. Okay. I do know. Okay, let's see that again. Now this is a habit I picked up through the years. He just breaks the tip off. It makes it easier to thread through. Almost like when you're threading thread through a needle, you want the tip to kind of be flat. Okay. And we keep going all the way around. The leaf's almost broke here, as you can see. But I caught it just in time. Just have to help guide the leaf. If you don't guide the leaf, it'll twist and bend the wrong direction. And we 
Just have a couple more to go here. And the last one. You pretty much filled up the space here by doing that. And then the next step, you're basically going to just go one time down. I have my hand on the other side pulling the leaf. Um, here we go. You just pull these down carefully. Even when you're doing this part, you have to help guide the leaf with your other fingers. Uh, guiding the leaf is very important. So let's do that all the way around. All the way around. Mm. How, how you guide the leaves down there, you need to show also. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm just pulling it. It's pretty simple. Oh, oh. I got my other hand on the other side, okay. and I'm just pulling it through. Here we go. And here we go, all the way through. And we're just about done here. The end of it is pretty easy. The leaf will point in the direction it needs to be. And I'll show you in just a second what I mean by that. Let's just go through one time. You can always tape a leaf if you break it, but so far so good. Then we turn it over. And we're going to adjust it again at the same time that we tighten. You use your pinky finger. There we go. Here's a leaf that kind of bent, so we're going to help it unbend. It's amazing what you could do with a coconut leaf if it's the right length. The longer the leaf, remember, the longer the leaf, the more you could weave it. The shorter the leaf, the more limited you are. Okay. Try that. So I'm still adjusting it. That's what I'm doing. And I'm tightening it at the same time. Tightening alone will not perfect it. You have to remember that. I've seen some weavers, they just kind of tighten it, and wherever the leaf falls, they leave it. But you really have to adjust it to help it. So it's as perfect as it could be. And then the leaf is pointing to the inside wall. And that's basically where I'm going to put it. That's where it will end. Okay. Did you stop? Mm -hmm. Oh, Krishna. Here we go. And the end. The last one. And there it is. Basically, all we have to do now is trim the remainder. Now hold on a second, I'll bring the knife. Then you basically just uh, take the knife to the end and you hold it against the leaf and you just pull the leaf in the direction of the blade. All the way around. All the way around here. And it's done. You just Knock these out, push these down, and it's done. All right, and that's it for now. And that completes this basket for this moment. Here we are at a friend's house in Naya Soy, just minutes away from Mehong Song. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a similar basket as we did just in the last segment. Instead of a shallow calabash, we're going to make a deeper calabash. And I'm going to show you exactly the steps again, similar to the one we just did. Um, first of all, to do this basket, you want the leaves to be long and the circle to be not too big. Uh, the stick should be facing the ground. This side has the stem and this side doesn't. So I'm going to have them face the ground like that. And in the direction it points, 
you take one out and you skip under three. Before we did under four, but now we're gonna go under three. And we're gonna go over one, two, three, four, five, and then up to the circle. Leave the first one a little loose. Then you go to number two. Skip three and weave five, over and under. And then up through the circle. Yeah, you wanna leave the first two a little bit loose. And then the third one is the same as the first two. Skip three, over and under five. Yeah, you could see a little bit better from over my shoulder here how it's done. And it's similar to the first one we showed you. The only difference is the combination. Now, when you have short leaves, you're limited to how far you can weave. So that's why the other basket, I only skipped four and I weaved only three. But this one, I'm able to skip three and weave five all the way around. And of course, the object of this game is not to break the leaf as much as possible. You have to help guide the leaf as you're weaving it. So I'm skipping three and then going over, under, over, under five. Number one now becomes number five. They all get their chance. Skip three, over and under five. 